Hello and welcome to Knit the Books, a mother-daughter video podcast for yarn and book enthusiasts by yarn and book enthusiasts. I'm Allie. I'm Vicki. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope everyone's doing well. I had a good couple of weeks. It is July 1st. We are in the second half of 2017. Can you believe it? It's just flown by. I know. It's crazy. It is crazy. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to do our regular segments. We're also going to give away our Hats for Kiddo prize. And we uh, we had our first our one year anniversary this past uh, June nineteenth I think, mm-hmm. and so we thought it would be fun to do some questions and answers. So a few of you gave us some questions, so we're gonna answer them probably at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, you don't have anything finished? Is that what you were telling me? That's what I was telling you. Okay, I finished two things. That is I finished super cute. My Starstones hat by Mina Phillips. Out of Hedgehog Fibers in the Dragonfly colorway. Wasn't that what it was? I think so. I really like this pattern. It uh, It's just a fun little textured knit. I haven't woven it. Well, I woven my ends, but I didn't trim them because why would I? Um, I wish I'd knit a little bit longer, but it does fit. I haven't washed it yet, so it will stretch out some because I just like mine to be a little bit slouchy. I think once I like actually block it though. I think yeah, it will be a block good, it. Yeah. I think it'll be a good link though. But I, so cute. I really like that. I think I'm gonna tweak it and make a, a hats for kiddos with it. Oh I think oh wouldn't that make a cute mm-hmm. hats for kiddo. When you tweak it enough you'll have to share. I need to get this pattern from her. I actually really like that. It's very fun to knit. It's very easy to memorize but it's a little bit more fun than just plain stocking net. Mm-hmm. So. so cute. There's that. And then I also finished, basically finished. I'm still binding off, but I'm counting it. I would count it, girl. Uh, oh, I love it. My cow me out of Malabrigo. That is gorgeous. So we have the tip down there and then up to there. I think it'll be very, very pretty. It's I, of course, be still gorgeous. need to block it and everything, but I finished that. This was knit out of, like I said, Malabrigo in the Solis colorway. I took this past week off, and I had thought that I would get more knitting done, and I didn't, but that's okay. That's okay. What have you been working on? I am working on, I have started the decreases on my June hats for kiddos. So I've started decreasing. It is a barley patterns by 10 can knit, and this is just some Karen, so soft Karen. Simply soft? Simply, yeah, that, yeah, that. So that's that. I've got that going. You working on anything? I am. I have also been working on my June hats. I am at decre. I started decrease this last night, and I would have it done, but Max downloaded a video game for me, and I played for like two hours yesterday, and I played for like three hours this morning. So <laughs> he finally found a game I liked. So. Awesome! And it's like it's in, it has five different chapters, and you have to download them separately. So I'll, I finished a chapter last night, and I downloaded the next one, and then I finished the second one this morning, and the third one was downloading when I left, so. But it takes forever to download. That's pretty yarn. So I just did a regular roll brim hat. This yarn is, um, I'll have to double check, I think it's the Regia. That's a cute hat. Perfect, the perfect pair where it, uh, it's the one where you knit to the yellow, mm-hmm. and then you start, you cut out the yellow. Uh, so what I did was, I, I'm holding it double, and for the most part, it is even. I, I think I cut maybe too far on one of mine, but even if I hadn't, there's some parts that would not have been equal, mm-hmm. which I thought was kind of interesting, but it has knit up very lo- lovely. It is lovely. And that I is love cute. this this section with the stripes. Very, very cool. It so, is very, um, very cool. I honestly have maybe 20 minutes of knitting left, um, so I'll get that done today. And then I probably we're keeping the boys theme, so I think I might just knit another one with this yarn, just because I really liked how it turned out. I like the way it, how that turns out. It's too. like denim. It's like a denim blue mm-hmm. with these pops of colors. I think I'm going to for my July. I'm going to keep with the gray, but I'm going to do a striped and add um, do a navy and gray striped. Oh, that'll thought, be pretty. Yeah, I thought that'd be pretty. This is a new to me heel, but I use. Um, for my make one left and make one right, I do the Elizabeth Zimmerman, you know, where mm-hmm. you write. So uh, the, so it's not really, a, it's just a, 
the Elizabeth Zimmerman's just a regular increase. It's not really a make one left or a make, make one, right. one right. It just it's invisible, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, for this heel to get the effect, you it needs to be seen. It needs to be seen, and it needed to be the real make one mm -hmm. left, and make one right. But it's okay. It fits good. It just doesn't. See, it's got the pretty center, it's got the center stripe, but it doesn't have the stripes that go on the side. But I am probably maybe an inch and a mm -hmm. half from starting on my toe. Awesome. So these are, it's sport weight. It's that is uh, gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? It's real pretty. That's, if, if we have cold weather this winter, last winter it wasn't, these are going to be so warm. So I really do like What's the pattern. What's the again? Hmm? What was the yarn again? It is Dana of One un, One Yarn Company. It's her yarn. It's a sport weight, and it's one that she did for... I got it from Jimmy Bean's Wool, but I don't know what's happened to my tag. I've probably pulled it out one time too many. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'll see if I can find it. It might be in show notes from the past. Probably. Maybe. If it is, it will be in this week's show notes. That would be wonderful. Or if she can find the tag, it will be in this week's show notes. It, yeah, it'll be in the show notes regardless. Because so, I know how to get to it from Jimmy Bean. Okay. So. Okay, good deal. I also worked on my sweater a little bit. Not a whole lot, but I wanted to work on it a little bit the other day. And then I realized, you know, last time I talked about it, you know, I figured out how many stripes I had left of the purple and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Well, I put it down because I couldn't remember how many stripes I had left. I didn't write it down or anything. Oh, okay. So I'm going to go back to that episode and see if I said specifically what it was. If mm -hmm. not, I'm going to have to measure the yarn again, which is fine. But I I, I added probably like two rows. But it's looking good. I really like that real pale, almost white looking but silver. Like, yeah. Uh, with that purple. It's really pretty. Yeah, I do too. I was I'm very pleased with how nice mm -hmm. those look together. It's very nice together. This is the Granita or Granito. I never remember. <laughs> we knit, had our knit lunch at work this week, and one of the ladies that knits with us has got three sweaters going at the same time. So, good for her. <laughs> it's really pretty. She's doing a, I don't know what the pattern is, but it's a real pretty burgundy, mm -hmm. um, solid color. She's from, she grew up in the Tennessee area, but she lived in Texas for years and years and years, so she's... She doesn't like coats, so she said a good thick sweater will do her for the winter. I said it's Granita or Granito. I never remember which one. It's by Hoey Locatelli. It's a really, really nice uh, pattern. I'm really enjoying it. And one day I'll be in one of the other colors <laughs> eventually. <laughs> Are you knitting? Have you been working on anything else? I have. I have. I actually, uh, we had an and today starts Tour de Fleece and Daniela from Caffeinated, Caffeinated Crafting. Um, suggested that we go to the coffee shop and those that spin brought their wheels and uh, knitted. Allison had other things she had to take care of. So I actually added more. I got my nails done. She got her nails done. And they're very pretty. But this is Dania, uh, Dana's uh, Dan I do that all the time. Daniela Dana. Uh, this is Dana Van Yarn Wine Company. This is Lake Francis Sunrise or Sunset One, Sunrise I think. It is gorgeous. I can't remember now. I can't remember either. Not it's alleys without a sound. Look, it's so pretty. I love it. I love I it love too. That. I love that colorway so much. Um, yeah, I, this is what I worked on at work. This oh, week. look how long! I know. Isn't it gorgeous. Look how long? It, we, we can't even get it. All on the. Th there we go. go. So I don't know whether. You're almost there. Uh, I just finished my sixth round, and you can do eight. I'm going to see where I am at seven, mm -hmm. and that may, be, that may finish it. Well, very nice. But I want it, I want it about this length, so it may take two mm -hmm. to get it there. It's so pretty. It's going to look really pretty on you. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I know the girls at work, they just love this yarn. That said, it's just happy looking. Yeah, it really is. It's nice. All right, you got anything else? That's all I've been. No, well, yeah, that's all I've been working on. But I didn't want to show this. I have. I wanted. I wanted to get this cast on before, but I thought I was gonna get all this stuff done this week. I hurt my back last Friday, and I was down until like Tuesday or Wednesday before I was able to like actually get up and move. Mm -hmm. And I was only feeling better Wednesday, and then Thursday I felt better, so we went out and because that was. I mean, I was taking. I was on vacation, so it's like let's go do something. So we went and. We went out of town for a little and got 
lunch and did a little shopping. Um, so I didn't get this started, but I wanted to get it started. I'm going to show you guys. So first, Space I got a new bag, bag from SoFlo. Sabrina had put this fabric in her... The Instagram has, like, this Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. And I um, I was looking through it, and I'm she had this fabric, and I messaged her, and I was like, I need that bag. I need a bag in that fabric. Because this was my favorite show as a kid. That's why she was mm -hmm. saying it. it. reminds her of when I was a kid, because this was my favorite show as a kid. Uh, so she had enough to make me a bag. And so I wanted just something in it. Like, because, you know, when you get a new bag, you want to put a new project in it. And so we're going to SSK at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And Marigold Jen is going to be there. And I wanted, so I have two, I have a few skeins of Marigold Jen. But I have two skeins that I've been wanting to knit together in a project for forever. And I finally decided what project I'm going to do. So I have the skeins here. And then they match. You do. You match. I, matchy. I like to do that when I can. The right. skein. This is Marigold Jen Cray Cray, the ultimate second power of crazy. This is on her sock weight yarn. It is 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina, so it has a little bit of glitter. I got this as a door prize the first uh, Into the Wool. And I've had it in my stash since then. Ooh, it's so soft. And then I got this. This is Marigold Jen Roomba. Uh, it's 75% merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. It's like a grungy purple. That's going to be so pretty together. Now, what are you making? I'm going to make it pure joy for me. <gasps> oh, Allison. So this is going to be the main color with this being the stripes, the stripes and, and the, the border. <gasps> that will be gorgeous. Yeah, so I want to get it cast on so I can show uh, Jenny when we go to SS SSK. And be like, look, look, look. Because I, I wanted to bring stuff. Nini Keller is going to be there and I'm spinning some fiber with her mm -hmm. stuff. So I wanted to bring the finished skein. And then I have a finished skein of... Uh, some hobbledy hoy stuff that I thought I'd bring too, so I could show mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth what I've what you've been doing. That's going to so be so. I want gorgeous. this cast on before then, and I can knit pure joy like while out and about. So I might that might be like my travel knitting. Oh, that would be good for that day when we're sitting <clears> at the table, <throat> or it might just be socks. I don't know because we're going to SSK and my allergies have been awful, so that's why my voice is sounding weird right now. I'm trying not to cough, um, and I'm gonna drive. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do another on the road episode because um, mom can't meet on the 14th. Right. I'm out of town. So and I, I don't remember what the day is though. Is it's it the 23rd? 22nd maybe. Okay. It's one, it was around then. Mm -hmm. So it'll probably be three weeks before. It'll be three weeks, weeks from three so. weeks from today. So, so that's my I love that. needle adjacent. And it matches my shadow. I just it does. It looks so pretty. <laughs> And then my other one that I've added a couple of rows to is uh, Allison's Immune to Gravity. My yarns from uh, Leading Men in, in their sweater. We okay. never remembered. We never, we never figured it out. But anyway, I've added a few rows to it. And it's real pretty. But that's all I'm working on. Alright, so let's do hats for kiddos. We get to actually do a live drawing. We haven't got to do that in a while. Right. I, um... Remember to lock the thread while mom was talking. So that's, if you see, if you saw me looking down, that's what I was doing. So we had 22, 21 posts, including mine. Mm -hmm. So on random number generator, I put 2 to 21. So we're going to generate, and we get nothing. We get 4. All right, so let's go back. Let's see who number 4 is. And number 4 is... Holly Ann 1217. Congratulations, Holly. Now, whose turn is it to gift a prize? My turn? I don't remember. I'll take it anyway. So, Holly messaged me with <laughs> pattern of your choice up to $7, or I can surprise you with um, uh, something from your wish list. For July, we're going to keep the Boys Club theme just so we can get some more of those boy mm -hmm. gender neutral hats. And then in August, we'll try and think of. Something. Something. Fun. Something fun. So, have you finished any books? I have only finished one. I haven't finished any, so go right ahead. I finished Nora Roberts Come Sundown. It, well, it was so good, and then I was waiting a lot what Laura said, because I told her, I said, can't find anything I want to listen to. I said, it was so good, it's kind of hard. She said, you got a book hangover, Mama. Uh, the Boating Ranch and Resort in Western Montana is a family business, an idyllic spot for vacationers, a little over 30,000 acres, and home to four generations. It's kept running by Boating Longbow with the help of a large staff, including a new hire, Callan Skinner, 
There was another member of the family once, Bodine's aunt, Alice, who ran off before Bodine was born. She never returned, and the Longbows don't talk about her much. The younger ones who never met her quietly presume she's dead, but she isn't. She's not far away, part of a new family, one she never chose, and her mind has been shattered. And then it goes on, when a bartender leaves the resort late one night, Bo and Cal discover their body body in the snow. It's the first sign that danger lurks in the mountains and that surround them. The police suspect Cal, but Bo finds herself trusting him and turning to him as another woman is murdered, and the long bows are stunned by Alice's sudden reappearance. It's got romance. It's got mystery. It's got intrigue. I, I love Nora Roberts when she writes this type of mm -hmm. book. So it was really, really good. I really cool. enjoyed it. So that, that's all I've finished. So what have you got going on? Well, I'm still reading. Um, I'm still listening to What She Knew uh, by Jillie McMillian, which I talked about last time. I thought I might finish listening to it because I'm about halfway done, but I just haven't felt like listening to the book. Like I said, I hurt my back. I didn't want to do anything. I was just ticked off about hurting my back and... While you're all, well, while you were on vacation. I know. And, like, part of... And, like, there's a part of me that's like, well, at least it happened then, but then it's like, well, no, because then I could have used sick days. And yeah. It doesn't matter. It's... it. What's done is done. And I'm still reading, um, Bite by K.S. Merbeth. Mm-hmm. But I also started to... <laughs> new books since we last. That's okay. I also started reading Lola by Melissa Scrivener Love. Uh, this one was, uh, I won this from Library Thing. Library Thing is this website that, um, where you can keep, like, a collection of the books mm -hmm. you own. That way, like, if, you know, there was a fire or something, you would have, like, a collection of, mm -hmm. you know, like, inventory oh, okay. or something. Like, a you have proof of what books were gone. Oh, okay. Basically. But they also have this thing where you can sign up for, it's called, like, the Early Readers Program. Mm -hmm. And you can get books from, like, publishers and stuff. And this was one that I got from them. This is not a book I would normally read, but I'm actually kind of liking it. I'll tell you what it's about. It says, An astonishing debut crime thriller about an unforgettable woman who combines the genius and ferocity of Lisbeth Salander with the ruthless ambition of Walter White. Elizabeth Sounder is the uh, girl from Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm -hmm. Walter White is Breaking Bad. So, two things that I like, especially Breaking Bad, so that's good. It says, The Crenshaw Six is a small but up-and-coming gang in south-central L.A. that has recently been drawn into an escalating war between rival drug, rival drug cartels. To outsiders, the Crenshaw Six appears to be led by a man named Garcia, but no one has figured out who the gang's real leader is. Or that Garcia's seemingly submissive girlfriend, Lola, is far more brilliant and dangerous than she appears. As the gang is increasingly sucked into a world of high-stakes betrayal and brutal violence, Lola becomes their only hope for survival. Lola marks the debut of a hugely exciting new thriller writer and of a singular, magnificent character unlike anyone else in fiction. I am about 100 pages in. It's good. It's different. Um, the writing style isn't the best but it's a good like I feel like it could be a quick read if I wasn't hopping around from book to mm -hmm. book but um I am wanting to pick this up more than I am like bite so mm -hmm. the characters are fine you know it's no, nothing spectacular yet but it's a fun book so far and it's different I do like that like it's um I don't really thought about this before but like reading diverse more divor diverse books and mm -hmm. so like these most of the main characters in here are Hispanic and so that's kind of neat to read something mm -hmm. more diverse. More, so. Yeah. So that's uh, one that I'm reading. Okay. Well, I'm listening to The Book Club by Mary Alice Monroe. It is... Um, it, it's just she invites you to meet five remarkable characters as she explores the power of friendship with tenderness, tenderness honesty, and understanding. It's, a, uh, it's about five women... Who are in? Who are friends? Who are in a book club? And it they've been in the book club for years. And it's, you know, the typical things happen as they do in every people's lives. There's one that's gotten sick. There's one whose husband has passed away, and just different things, life events that's happening, how they handle it, and how they're handling it as a group. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 pretty good. Well, good. But that's all I've got going on. I do have been kind of stepped back into the podcast world. That's fine. I am reading one more. Mm -hmm. I got, uh, if you guys remember the last podcast, Mom and I talked about how much we love The Dollhouse mm -hmm. by Fiona Davis. I got an advanced reader copy of her new book. And I've started it, and this is actually what I want to read, but I can only read it on my phone. And I don't really like to read on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I'm going through this stage where 
I go through stages, I don't know if other people do, where I go through stages where sometimes I want to read only physical books and then I'll go through stages where I want to read everything on my Kindle mm -hmm. and I've been going through a physical book stage pretty hardcore right now. But uh, this book is great. I'm only a few chapters in and it's already so good. It's just as good as Dollhouse. Oh. And that's what I was nervous about it because I love Dollhouse that much. I love Dollhouse. So let me uh, tell you what this is about real quick. It's similar construction. Mm -hmm. That's not the word I want exactly, but it works, so you'll see what I mean. Uh, Fiona Davis returns with a compelling novel about the thin lines between love and loss, success and ruin, passion and madness, all hidden behind the walls of the Dakota, New York City's most famous residence. After a failed apprenticeship, working her way up to head housekeeper of a posh London hotel is more than Sarah Smythe could ever thought she'd make of herself. But when a chance encounter with Theodore Camden, Camden one of the architects of the Grand New York Apartment House of the Dakota leads to a job offer, job offer. Her world is suddenly awash in possibility. No mean feat for a servant in 1884. The opportunity to move to America where a person can rise above one station. The opportunity to be the female manager of the Dakota, which promises to be the greatest apartment house in the world. And the opportunity to see more of Theo, who understands Sarah like no one else, and is living in the Dakota with his wife and three young children. In 1985, Bailey Camden is desperate for new opportunities. Fresh out of rehab, the former party girl, interior designer, is homeless, jobless, and penniless. Two generations ago, Bailey's grandfather was the ward of the ward of famed architect Theodore Camden. But the absence of a genetic connection means Bailey won't see a dime of the Camden family's substantial estate. Instead, her cousin Melinda, Camden's biological great-granddaughter, will inherit almost everything. So when Melinda offers to let Bailey oversee the renovation of her lavish Dakota apartment, Bailey jumps at the chance, despite her dislike of Melinda's vision. The renovation will take away all the character and history of the apartment Theodore Camden himself lived in and died in after suffering multiple stab wounds by a mad woman named Sarah Smythe, a former Dakota employee who had previously spent seven months in an insane asylum on Blackwell's Island. 100 years apart, Sarah and Bailey are both tempted by and struggle against the golden excess of their respective ages. For Sarah, the opulence of a world ruled by the Astors and Vanderbilts. For Bailey, the free-flowing drinks and cocaine in the nightclubs of New York City, and take refuge and solace in the Upper West Side's gilded fortress. But a building with a history as rich and often tragic as the Dakotas can't hold its secrets forever. And it says, and what Bailey, and then there's nothing else. So I don't know what happened. But uh, it's it's really good. It's really really wait. good. And I um I wasn't sure mm -hmm. if it would uh, be just as good. It's a little bit slower for me, mm -hmm. but it's still really good. Uh, the Dakota is where John Lennon was right. shot. Um, so I like looked and I was like, well, that's a real place. And they're talking about John Lennon, but the character Thomas Camden or mm -hmm. whatever his name was, that wasn't really you know architect on there. As far as I can tell, I didn't do a whole lot of research. Basically, all I did was go to Wikipedia and type in Dakota mm -hmm. and see to see who the architect was and his name wasn't on there. So I don't know how much true history mm -hmm. it is and I kind of don't want to research it too much until I'm done reading. Yeah. So I'm gonna, whenever I'm finished, I'm gonna look into it a little bit more and see, see if uh, there's more truth but, with the book. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so to celebrate our one-year anniversary, we're going to do a couple things. First, mm -hmm. we are going to give away uh, prizes, and we have, uh, we'll have have this prize first. If you guys remember, a couple months ago, Whimsy Stitches, Rick sent us a bag to give away, and the person who won never contacted us, uh, so we are going to use that as a prize today. So this person is going to get this bag and this yarn. This is a self-striping sock yarn from Online. It's a super sock, neon color, um, 420 meters, 75% wool, and 25% palm, palmide. Uh, very, very pretty. It is very nice pretty. Work, nice workhorse yarn. So mom says, mom has the group up. There's how many members again? There are 86 members. All right, so I have on here. 1 to 86. 1 to 86. So I'm going to generate. I'm going to blow it up so we can see it better. Generate. Number 60. First person is Sarah Janey. 
So if you will message me, Sarah, we will get that uh, into uh, get that to you as soon as you message me. We're gonna, we'll do it again if uh, we'll wait another month, and if we don't hear from her, we'll do these prizes. We'll these prizes will just become hot Tokido's prizes. Okay. Um, and we're also gonna do um another gift that is book themed, and mm -hmm. so we were talking, and what we're gonna do is whoever wins this one, we will give you either. a... We'll get you either a Books a Million card or a Barnes & Noble card, whichever one that you can shop at, because I know not everyone can shop at either of mm -hmm. them, um, for $15, yeah. roughly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will send that to you with maybe like a bookmark or something. Mm -hmm. um, We're going to throw something else in with yeah. it. So we'll do that again. So as you'll see, 1 to 86, 60 is still on there from the last one. Generate, and we get number... 29. Oh, that's going to be easier because there were 24. We go to page 2. So 25 to 6, 27, 28, 29. And so the winner of that is Hot Needle times 2. So if you'll message me, uh, we will figure out which place you can shop at. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you can't shop at either, maybe we can do like an Amazon card or we something. We could. We could do an Amazon we'll figure, card. We'll figure you... something out. But it'll be um, for, 15, mm -hmm. for $15. So With something else thrown in. With, yeah, a bookmark of some sort thrown in. Um, and so we're going to try, when we do these giveaways now, because we want to try to figure out a way to put books in. But I'm stingy and don't like to give away my books. Right. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so we're going to try that and see how that goes. And then we also did for, um, for this week, for our one year anniversary, we asked you guys to ask us some questions. And so we have, we have a few. Let's start with this one first. BZ Mama asks, what's your favorite book to movie? I have a hard time with those. Mm-hmm. Because the book is so much more. I have an answer if you want me to go ahead. You go right ahead. Because Mine, I'm... and I thought about this for a while. Mine is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. And um, I like it. I, I picked that one because I took the question, and now that I've read it out loud, I took the question for some reason when I first read it as, which one do you, which one is the movie better? I don't know why I interpreted it mm -hmm. that way, but that's how I interpreted it. Um, and that for me, Stardust is a much better movie than it is a book, but the book is still really good. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I had another, my other option was, uh, Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I thought the movie was a lot better than the book. Was it? Um, I did enjoy, uh, there's a couple, I love mysteries. So there's the, and I don't know what the author's name is, but it's the Rizzoli and Isles, mm -hmm. Tess Gerritsen, who's who that is. And, um. Is that a TV show? It was a TV show. It was a series that ran for, well, it's not running anymore. I think they had maybe six seasons or something like that, or maybe even more. I can't remember. But it was based on characters from her book, from Rizzoli and Isles. And I enjoyed that series being made from the book. Mm -hmm. But I also, James Patterson, the Kiss the Girl series, where it's like the, no, the Murder, Murder Girl club series mm -hmm. it's not a movie it was actually another tv series i really enjoyed that one too um as for uh, some of the other ones I, I really don't know about books made into a movie um I, the dear john nicholas sparks those have always been good movies although i i really usually enjoy the book better mm -hmm. harry potter is a good one too that's mm -hmm. i mean that's a those are good those so, are good um yeah all right so next question this is from Summer Yarns. What is your favorite book you've read since starting the podcast? Oh, I forgot about this question. I was going to go back and mm -hmm. look because it's hard for me to be like, oh, my favorite book is this because my favorite book is usually the last book that I read that I really like. Mm -hmm. And so that would be The Dollhouse. I was going to say The Dollhouse. <laughs> uh, I've enjoyed listening to several, but I, there's just something about that one that I really, really do like. Um, now, the two Nora Roberts, I've really enjoyed those, too, since doing this podcast, because it's got my romance, and it's got my mystery, it's got that thriller in there, but um, that, that's the ones that I've enjoyed the most. 
there's some I've just tolerated to get through them. Well, going back and looking, I'm not going all the way back on my Goodreads, but I also really liked The Invoice by Jonas Karas Carlson. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to, like, just looking at my scores, I give high scores to a lot of the celebrity memoirs. So, like, A Life in Parts by Brian Cranston, Where Am I Now by Mara Wilson, and um, there was another one. Oh, Troublemaker, the Liam Remini Scientology book. Mm. So, but I... Like I said, like my answer, my answers right now is just the dollhouse, <laughs> the dollhouse by Fiona Davis. Everyone needs to read the dollhouse. <laughs> yes, it's really, really good. It is really good. So, all right. Next question is from Tan's Crafty Knits. What was your first knitting project? She has two questions, so we'll just do that one first. My first knitting project was the wheat scarf that mm -hmm. I made into a cow. It's a uh, tin can knits mm -hmm. pattern. That was my first one. My first one was just a garter stitch uh, scarf out of blue, probably red heart. We started off mom good. We started her off with Unwind Yarn Company. Yeah. So she started off with the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then her next question is, what has been your biggest knitting disaster? <sighs> probably my biggest one was my first um, Allison's Without a Sound. When I went to bind it off, for some reason I didn't do just a regular bind off. I did a stretchy bind off. So one end of it is like <laughs> this and one end of it is like this. <laughs> and then I have probably, I've only been knitting since 2014 mm -hmm. and I'm a slow knitter. So I've not done a lots and lots of projects. But I have ripped out and started over several things. Oh, we all have. Um, I was trying to think about that. And I, the the one that keeps coming to, kept coming to mind was the first time I knit a hat for Max. I didn't follow a pattern because why would I? Um, I got, had circular needles, but I got them from Hobby Lobby, and I, at the time, the smallest circular needles they had were the 24 inch, so I just cast on enough stitches <laughs> to fit on that 24, the thing was huge, okay? So, but then, going on, the next one, the next hat I did for him was too small. He still wore it, bless his heart, but it was too small. It looked like a skull cap <laughs> on him, so... <laughs> And then uh, a life of her own, Avril, asked us a bunch of questions. Are you ready, Mom? Yeah, I'm trying to get it bigger so I can read the... Okay. Okay. Question number one. Do you prefer standalone books or series? Uh, that one's kind of hard for me because if it's a good series, I like the series. Mm -hmm. um, and then some good standalones, too. So I really don't... That one's really hard for me to answer. I think I did... I don't know if I did a blog post about it or if I just mentioned it in a blog post recently, but I've come, I, I prefer standalone. I really like a series when it's good, but I hate that, and it's the same thing with TV shows, I hate when they continue a series just because they know they can make mm -hmm. money off of it. So whenever you, whenever you get to the part of a series, um, where you can tell like this is just for money, mm -hmm. I lose complete interest. Right. And there's so many books, especially like a few years ago. When, like, with the young adult books, they all were trilogies and all this mm -hmm. stuff. It's just, like, it didn't necessarily need to be a trilogy or, in, you know, one book would have been fine is all. Yeah. I, my favorite kind of series is, like, when it's about three or four characters and there's a book on each and then it's done. Mm -hmm. I'm like you. When they're drug out and it's really nothing to write about, mm -hmm. but coming up with something to write about, I, they've lost me. I'm done. But I, I do like a series that... Like if it's about a family, you know, one book about this one or this one or this one, and I'm good with those. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've 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 come to the conclusion that I just prefer standalones. Stand I like to finish this this story and then move on to the next one. But I mean, a good series is good too because then you're like, oh, there's a bunch. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I guess it just depends. But uh, I think for me, it's standalones. Which do you prefer, book to movie adaptations or book to TV adaptations? I've done more TV. I, I, we don't watch a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. We watch, I mean, we there's certain ones that I will watch, but I do watch a lot of book to TV. I loved, um, oh, Reese Witherspoon was in it. and Big Little Lies. Big Little Lies. I loved that. And I'm hoping it's still on HBO because I'm going to take a, I'd like to take a in-demand uh, splurge, purge, what's <laughs> it called, when you watch one all day a long a binge there you go and watch it again um i can't think of a lot of 
particulars with this, but I think I would prefer a TV show, especially with how they're doing TV shows now, where they're more detailed and mm-hmm. they like they can include more of the stuff. Right. Um, like I know Game of Thrones is a big one. I don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't read the books. I tried not not into it. Um, but you know it's cool. Like cause some of these, I guess I can't think of an example right now. But you know it seems like with some of them they're like taking a book and like that's that season is that mm-hmm. book and then the next season is the book so it's like they can fit more in mm-hmm. um and it seems like tv budgets have been increasing so and i'm wondering if part of that is maybe audiences are changing mm-hmm. maybe people are preferring like well, a, people like to stay home and binge watch they do i we, mean we that's, really that's do. the culture we're in right now and it's wonderful <laughs> yeah so what do you do to get out of a knitting or reading slump well, I've just got out of a reading slump, and I just, for me, it's like I try, and I do the same thing with knitting. I try and get something that I've wanted to knit or read for a long time, mm-hmm. or a yarn that I've really wanted to knit with for a long time, and I try and, like, get to use that to help me get into it, but it doesn't always work, and sometimes I just have to ride it out. Ride the slot, yeah. Um, for me, uh, I I don't... I'm not one that picks up knitting every time they sit down anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, it would be probably something that I really wanted, like a new pattern or something that might help me pull me out of my slump. Get me excited about working on it Mm -hmm. again. And the same thing for books. If I get to a point I don't want to read or listen, I try to think, oh, I really need to, to spend some time in a book. I try to find one by... One I've either been wanting to read, mm-hmm. that's on my to-be-read list, or maybe a new one by an author that I love. Sometimes mm-hmm. that'll pull me out of my slump. And with, uh, and sometimes like a quick read or a quick knit, uh, mm-hmm. like finishing something like in a day, sometimes that can get me motivated again. Motivated again, yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any patterns you've knit a few times? I have done the wheat scarf. I've done the wheat scarf and made it into a cow a couple of times. One of my favorites is for the hats for kiddos. That little roll brim hat. I love that mm-hmm. little hat. It's well, I call it mindless knitting because I don't mm-hmm. have to. Yeah. All I have to do is I knit, I cast on, and then I just knit until it's time to de- decrease, so I can binge watch whatever I want to on TV mm-hmm. and kind of get the best out of both. For me, um, the only ones I can think of that I've knit multiple times are barley. And I think I've knit the wheat a couple of times. And aside from my patterns, like I've knit my par- patterns a couple of times, but I don't feel like that counts. Um, and just vanilla socks. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, repeating of patterns has mostly been patterns that I can memorize easily. And like you said, like uh, autopilot knitting, mm-hmm. where, I'm, where I can do multiple things while knitting. Um, I have patterns that I want to knit again, but I just haven't done right. it yet so yeah. um what well, usually makes you go back to that pattern well go on, i guess i, I guess we kind of answered that just something mindless something where we don't need to think and right or like with your uh without a sound and some of your patterns where you do the drop stitches mm-hmm. i love drop stitches i think that mm-hmm. makes such a pretty element to a mm-hmm. garment especially with the variegated mm-hmm. and um speckled yarns yes uh, do you usually work on one project <laughs> or read one book at a time or work on a few? Well, I work on a few and read a few. That's why I do. I, um, some day there will be days, especially if I'm, if I've worked. So I've listened to a book that day while mm-hmm. driving and then I come home and I'll read on a different book and sometimes I'll read on two different books. And then with knitting, I don't hop as much like during the work week. I don't knit as much, but like on the weekend, like you know, in the morning I'll start off with like an easier project mm-hmm. and then like later in the day when I can focus a little bit more, that would be a, a project that actually needs my focus. Mm-hmm. So I just hop as I need, as whatever floats my boat at that time of day. Right. <laughs> right. Um, when Allison was little, we lived in a house that my bedroom was upstairs and um, we didn't live there real long. So she was, she was a little but They would laugh at me because I would have a book or two going downstairs and I always had one up by my bed. Mm-hmm. And Scott would say, how can you remember? But it, you know, it's yeah, pretty I get easy. That, I get that question a lot. And I guess it's because, um, I try and read books that are, that are drastically different. Yes. And that's pretty much the only way I can do it. 
So, um, if you work on FU, how do you decide which project and book to work on? Um, I guess it goes back to what mood I'm in. Like, if I'm driving, obviously I'm going to listen to that book. Mm -hmm. If I'm home and I want something to read for, like, just a few minutes, then I'm going to pick up a book that I know is not going to completely pull me in, but a book that I still am enjoying reading, but maybe not a book that... A book that I can still put down. Right. Uh, same thing with knitting. Um, if I come home and I'm like, well, I have 30 minutes for dinner I'll, and I want to knit. Mm -hmm. I'll knit on something that I can pick up and put down easily. Um... It really just goes on where my head is at the time. Right. On which one I pick. Right. Um, I listen. Right now I'm listening a lot more than I'm doing reading of books. So I listen all the way to work and I listen all the way home usually. Mm -hmm. And then I just, if I have one going, uh, I like for it to be something where I don't have to think. You know, I like cozy mysteries, so I really like to pick up those and read those for a little bit and let my more in-depth ones be read to me. <laughs> uh, as far as knitting, it depends upon my time. Like at night, if I don't have very much time, I like to do like the little hats or something where you can do a round or two. If you need to put it down real quick, you can. I, I'm always afraid that if it's something that's real detailed, if I can't give it the time that I need to give it, I'm going to mess up where right. I am or something. So that's kind of depends on how much time I have. And then her last question is what has been your favorite project you've worked on and what has been your favorite book you've read this year? My favorite book this year has been The Dollhouse by Fiona Davis. Right. That's been <laughs> mine too. I, and I highly recommend it to everyone. Actually, um, Allison's sister Laura, I told her the other day, I said, she said, well, she's on the waiting list for it at the library. I said, you are going to love it. As far as project, mm -hmm. I'm really loving that without a sound right now. It's so pretty. Those colors make me happy. What's your favorite project? I'm looking to see what I've finished this year. I haven't finished a whole lot this year. <laughs> like, at all. And then I did a cow me too. That I loved that that red cow me I did when my favorite project is like if I think back is probably my um when I'm my weaving. Oh, you've been doing so good. Those are so pretty. The one of the ones that uh well pretty actually all of them I mm -hmm. can't pick a favorite one, but uh when I th look back on what I've created this year, which I just looked at Ravelry, it's not a whole lot apparently. Um, <laughs> Uh, I go back to those weavings, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I really enjoy watching your weavings take shape, mm -hmm. and that might be what I bring with me to SSK to work on. Oh, that would be fun. That way I could watch. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you guys for those questions. If you won a prize, please get in touch with me on Ravelry, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get those out to you. We are going to end this episode with something new. We're going to do, this is kind of like, Two Knit Lit Chicks does the thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, but I thought we could maybe look back on, like, what were your favorites from this past month? Maybe two or three things that were your favorites from this past month. What all has happened in the month of June? You may do one of mine. You do one of yours. Uh, one of my, I was thinking back on this month and thinking of things that made me happy. And one of mine was getting to have dinner with my mom and my sister. Oh, that I know. Was that fun. was so fun. Getting to have, getting to take a vacation at the end, even though mm -hmm. I didn't get to do anything that I want to do, but that's okay. And then my third one is makeup. I re-fell in love with red lipstick this month, and I'm actually, I'm not wearing it because I have on green eyeshadow and it didn't look as good. Specifically, the two reds that I've been really into are, they're both from Kat Von D. This bright one oh, that's so is pretty. called Santa Sangra. This is a really, really pretty red. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous, Allison. It is very, very bright. It is, um, I usually prefer a blue red. This is more of an orange red, but it still has like a blue tint to it's it. It's very pretty. It's really, really pretty. And then my other red is also from Kat Von D. This is Project Chimps. This is a limited edition color that she did last year, and I regret not getting to this. Uh, she did it to raise money for Project Chimps, which is a organization that um saves chimps from like animal or cosmetic testing mm. if i remember correctly 
So the top one is Project Chimps. This is um, like a very warm and cool tone red. I actually I don't know like how, it the I best. don't know how to ex how they did that, but it's a warm, warm brick red. It has a very cool tone to it at the same time. It's my favorite red. It matches my hair pretty well. This actually, the brighter one matches my hair pretty much dead on. This one looks better with my hair, <laughs> I feel like. So, red has been my love for June, mm -hmm. for makeup-wise. So, those have been my my three faves of the month. My three faves of the month, well, first, like Allison said, I don't get to spend time with the girls together. And we had dog set for Laura's little dog, which was a fun, happy week of the month, too. It was just fun having her here. She's a loving little thing. and um, But then when Laura came to pick her up, I texted Allison and said, what time are you getting off work? And so I got to go out to eat with my girls and spend some time with them. That was fun. And the other fun thing is uh, my grandson has bought a, um, he's adulting. And yeah. he has bought a Jeep. And it is so cool. And he is just in love. So Good for him. Uh, I got to, I haven't ridden in it yet, but I got to sit in it. But it was so funny because I said, Blake, Mimi and Pa are going to Cade's Cove. We're going to the Smokies. We'll be up to get it on July the 3rd. <laughs> and I'll keep it for the week and I'll bring you my Altima. And I, that didn't, no. That no, didn't he wasn't into no, that. He wasn't into that at all. He said he had driven the Altima all he wanted to. But not, <laughs> uh, and then I got to, um, it's been fun reconnecting with um, people I haven't seen for a little while. Even though we've been back in Cookville for a year. Um, working the way I work and commuting the way I work. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, hard <coughs> to, com to run into people and see people. But a few weeks ago at, at church, I actually ran into a girl that I used to spend quite a bit of time with when we lived here before. And that was fun, happy time. Good. So that's how we're going to... I don't know if we're going to do it every episode or maybe at the end of the month. I think that's a good after the, at the end of the uh, month. That way we can just kind of reflect on the month and kind of end on some good notes. Um, I will probably have a makeup one every time. That's okay. No, I, I, I know. I'm just saying. I'm just warning everybody. I was just thinking, um, I do wear it. Uh, I don't wear it. My girl, everybody in my family loves it, I guess, a lot more than I do. Um, what makeup? Makeup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big makeup. It's just. But I remember being little and stealing like your eyeshadow palettes. Yes, and, and like she just painting all, my face with yep, it. Yep, she's always loved it, and uh, you actually get it from Mama. Has always loved mm -hmm. makeup. She's always done. She loves to get the Estee Lauder trunk thing that comes out every year at Christmas. Um, but she's older now. She's 84, so mm -hmm. she'll kill me if she saw this. But anyway, uh, she doesn't do as much makeup as she used to. So. But it's fun to watch Allison's love for makeup for me. And then Brooke. And Brooke, my yes. Is like, my granddaughter, yeah, she loves it too. She's amazing at it, though. She really is. Oh, so. she's a talented little thing. She is. So that's the end of this, I guess. I never know how to end these things. I know it. Um, so hats for kiddos. Woo, forgot I had lipstick on. Yeah, um, not all you. Uh, hats for kiddos. <laughs> Uh, for July is also going to be boy themed. Uh, Holly Ann, uh, just message me whenever you can for your um, pattern. <laughs> yeah, distracted by nothing. So, uh, so we will, like I said, we're going to wait and we're going to record when we go to SSK in about three weeks. Mm -hmm. Road trip. I think we did that last year. We road trip somewhere, wasn't it? Yeah, but I don't know if it was SK. We Maybe been to Murfreesboro. Um, but we are going to, I'm going to go wash my hands, and then we're going to record a special episode that will come up next weekend. So, uh, be on the lookout for this little special this episode. This little special episode. So, we'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Happy uh, 4th of July. Yes, happy 4th of July. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.